What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to delete the correct user for our app with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at deleting the correct user. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've got a bunch of users. And right now we've got it to where anybody can click these delete links and delete users. And now obviously that's not a good idea. We want this specific user only to be able to delete themselves and not other users. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I'm going to head over to my app.py file and let's search for delete ID. And this is our delete route. And you can see right now there's no type of security whatsoever. Anybody can just go to this link and delete users. So that's not a good idea. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that somebody's logged in before they delete a user. So just anybody on the internet just can't click a link or go to one of those URLs to delete a user. So we already know how to do this. We can go at login underscore required. And that'll take care of that. So now if we head back over to our app, you can see I'm not logged in. If I try and click on one of these things, it says, please log in to access this page. If we go back and click reload, the user still exists. So, okay, that's one sort of level of security that helps. But now if I'm logged in as John, for instance, I can still delete Tim. So we want to make sure that can't happen. So we know the ID right here that we're trying to delete. Now we just need to compare that to the logged in user ID. And if they match, go ahead and let them delete. Otherwise say, eh, no, you can't do that. So we can do that pretty simple. Let's use an if statement. Let's go if ID, which is the ID we're trying to delete equals the current underscore user dot ID, then do stuff. Well, what do we want to do? All of this stuff. So I'm just going to grab all of this and pop it over and indent it. So if these two match, go ahead and try and delete. If there's a problem, throw an error. Else, we can do an else block here. Let's throw up a little error message. I'm just going to copy this one. Paste it in. And let's say, what do we want to say? Sorry, you can't delete that user. Something like that. And then we just want to redirect. So I'm just going to return, redirect. And let's point this to URL underscore four. And I don't know, let's just redirect them to their dashboard because they're going to be a logged in user, right? So that means they'll have their own dashboard. We're trying to delete. We'll just redirect to the dashboard. So, okay, that should do the trick. So let's go back here and let's copy this URL, this delete URL for Tim, right? So if I copy this, let's look at it. It's just localhost slash delete slash 16, which is his user ID number, right? So we're going to need to remember this. So I'm just going to copy this because when we log in as John, this page disappears. This page only shows up if you're not logged in. That's just how we've done it. So let's log in real quick as John. So that was code me password one, two, three. Okay. So you can see that page disappears. So now I can just paste in. Well, let's go to a different page first. I can paste in that same URL, delete 16, hit enter. It says, sorry, you can't delete that user. Okay, so let's log back out, go to our register site, our register page, and we can see sure enough, Tim is still there. So, okay, that seems to work. Now let's also copy this again. And now let's try and log in as Tim and see if we can delete Tim's user. So let's log in as Tim, password one, two, three. Okay, go to a different page. Type that same URL in again, delete user 16. We do that, user deleted successfully, and we can see now only John exists. If we try and then log out and then log back in, Tim is gone. So that's all we had to do. Pretty simple, and uh, that's all there is to it. So now we've pushed our code up to Heroku, so we need to save this and push it to Heroku. Anytime we make a local change, we have to then push it again up to Heroku. So let's go git add period git commit dash a m and let's say correct user deletion. I don't know, something like that. 
and let's push it to GitHub, git push. And then let's push it to Heroku, git push, Heroku main, compressing, launching, and done. And we can copy this URL if we want and punch this into the browser just to make sure. Okay. And if we go to register, we can see Tim is gone. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 47 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codingme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.